All right, so uh, next up we have Avid Faruqi. He is from here at the University of Utah. Originally, he grew up in Orange County, California, went to school at UC Berkeley. Uh, he worked the last couple weeks, the first two weeks, he worked with Dr. Jacobian and is now working with Dr. Moshevar. And we'll be presenting on whether phaco tip diameter impacts efficiency and chatting. So, go ahead. Thank you, Russell. Good morning. Uh, as Dr. Rus uh, Russell Swan mentioned, my name is Abid Faruqi. Uh, today I'm going to be presenting on a research topic that I, a pro research project that I worked on with um, under the supervision of Dr. Olson as a third year medical student. And the topic of my conversation today is going to be does phaco tip diameter impact efficiency and chatter? So as an overview, I'm going to just discuss the problem that we noted <coughs> and uh, address the question that we had uh, pertaining to this problem. I'll go over the study design that um, we employed in our experiment and then discuss the results that we obtained from our experiment and uh, then just kind of discuss what we learned from the results. So there's been significant advances in the field of cataract surgery since it began in the 1960s, um, primarily targeting the components of cataract surgery from the FACO systems to the settings of the FACO systems, either the aspiration rates, the vacuum levels, the bottle heights, to try to optimize uh, efficiency and minimize complications of cataract surgery. Uh, there's also been significant advances in FACO tips, either uh, whether they're bent or uh, radius, as Dr. Olson had <coughs> mentioned uh, in his Grand Rounds talk a few weeks back. Uh, and a lot of these have the components have been studied extensively through peer-reviewed literature uh, to determine which settings for FACO emulsification is most effective, as well as which tips are best used in, in certain patient populations. But in my readings and research, I had not come across any peer-reviewed peer literature that uh, evaluated the impact of FACO tip diameters on efficiency of uh, cataract extraction. Uh, FACO tips have been uh, evolving since the beginning of cataract surgeries, mainly to uh, allow for smaller incisions to uh, prevent uh, complications during surgery or after surgery, as well as increase, as well as aiming to <coughs> increase, as well as to a uh, aiming to increase. Um, sorry, in as well as to increase the recovery time from the surgery. Some of the more commonly used FACO tips that I've encountered uh, when in, uh, in cataract surgery are the 19 gauge or the 1.1 millimeter, the 20 gauge or the uh, 0.9 millimeters, or the 21 gauge or the 0.7 millimeter FACO tip. Uh, given that there are no, there were no peer-reviewed literatures documenting the impact that FACO tip diameter has on efficiency or chatter, I thought that this project would be. Uh, great beginning step to shed some light on the relationship. So in my, my question was, does phaco tip diameter impact efficiency or chatter during cataract extraction? Uh, efficiency here was defined as the inverse amount of time that is required in seconds to remove the nuclear lens fragment. And uh, that it would follow that a low efficiency phaco tip would require more time for a cataract removal, and the opposite, a high efficiency tip, would require less time for removal. Chatter was defined as a particle bounce of the fragment bounce away from the tip during, uh, during ultrasound work. So a chatter would uh, cause uh, either increased risk of complications from it hitting the uh, capsule, or it could lead to decreased efficiency because of the longer <coughs> length of surgery time required to remove the nuclear lens fragment. So in my study, we uh, obtained uh, porcine lenses and prepared them according to a previously validated method to resemble human lens, human cataract lenses as in regards to its density and behavior during FACO. The FACO, we employed three different FACO systems, a torsional, a transversal, and a micropulse uh, system to study three different FACO tips. The settings of the FACO systems were also the same as had been previously studied to uh, maximize efficiency 
of, uh, of the extraction. Uh, all the FACO tips that we used were all from microsurgical technology. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've used, we used three different uh, diam tip diameters, the 1.1 millimeter, the 0 0.9 millimeter, and the 0 0.7 millimeters uh, FACO tips. And all tips had a 30 degree tip angle. Uh, unfortunately, there was no 1.1 millimeter tip for the torsional study arm, so we only compared the 0 0.7 to the 0 0.9 in, in that arm of our study. So in my reading, the came, it became evident that there was three main components for, uh, that were important to cataract extraction, specifically the efficiency of cataract extraction, aspiration flow rate, uh, vacuum levels, and uh, FACO tip movement were the three factors that were very important. So given uh, this, our, we hypothesized that the largest bore size would be the most efficient given its advantages with uh, increased vacuum hold, increased fluid flow, and a greater ultrasound work uh, per tip cycle movement. Our hypothesis is, can be, uh, is based on a well-known uh, law, Poiset's law, which states that the flow rate is proportional to the radius of the tube to the fourth power. So it follows that a small change in the tip diameter would result in a large change in the flow, given that the radius to the fourth power given that the flow is related to the radius to the fourth power. So a large bore needle would create a larger flow and would theoretically increase the speed of extraction. Also, as I mentioned, that uh, vacuum levels plays an important role in the e extraction process. So uh, the total hold for any given level of vacuum would be highest for a large bore uh, tip compared to a small bore tip given that the total hold is directly, directly related to the square of the bore size opening. So we ran the experiment. We ran 20 runs, um, 24 runs of, the, of uh, extraction with each FACO tip and took the best 20 uh, results. And we, ca we came up, and these were our results. So you could see that the torsional, which only had the 0.9 comparing it to the 0.7, uh, micropulse and the transversal were the three arms of our studies. We found that in all three uh, arms, we had there was a uh, consistent increase in time required for extraction of the 0.7 to the 0.9 in all three study arms. Um, only the micropulse and the transversal showed a sig sti statistically significant difference in uh, extraction times inefficiency, but all three had the same trend across the board. We also noted that, according to our hypothesis, we thought the 1.1 would, would be the most efficient. However, as you can see in the micropulse and transversal, this is not the case. The 0.9 millimeter tips required less time for removal compared to the 1.1 millimeter tips. So this these results suggested that the 0.7 millimeter tips were inefficient in removing the cataract in a timely manner, likely because the small tip size resulted in less vacuum uh, level, less vacuum, it generated less vacuum hold and suggested that maybe the lens fragment cannot engage at the tip edge appropriately for removal. Similarly, for the 1.1 millimeter tips, the efficiency was not the greatest because the tip size may have been too large for the nuclear fragment that um, did not create a maximum vacuum hold level and so there wasn't uh, enough of a uh, there wasn't enough of a vacuum created to remove the the, uh, the tip the fragment this was supported by our our uh, results on the number of chatter events so there is either one, two, or three chatter events for each uh, study arm, torsional, micropulse, and transversal. We only saw a statistically significant difference uh, in chatter events um, with the transversal arm of our study. However, uh, however we, s we looked at these results further and saw that the standard de of deviation uh, in each of these results 
was higher for the 1.1 millimeter and the 0.7 millimeter compared to the 0.9 millimeter tips. This standard of deviation can be thought of as an increase in variability in our results. And this suggests that the increase in variability comes from the poor engagement of the lens at the tip edge. So we refer to this as a micro chatter, that a micro chatter event at the tip edge and it would result in increased, uh, decreased efficiency and a longer length of removal time for the lens fragment. For the 1.1 millimeter tip, this micro chatter was due to the poor occlusion of the tip at of the fragment at the tip edge. And for the 0.7 millimeter tip, we thought that this um, micro chatter was due to uh, inefficient net volume hold. So the weak seal at the tip lens interface would create a mi small five micron micro chatter that reduced efficiency and prolonged extraction time. Combining all of our uh, results, we found that the 0.7 millimeter tip compared to the 0.9 millimeter tip was highly less, uh, highly less significantly, significantly less efficient um, compared to any of the other uh, tip sizes. Um, and also, we did not see a difference in the lens, uh, significant, statistically significant difference in the lens removal time of the 1.1 millimeter tip to the 0 0.9 or the 1.1 to the 0 0.7. However, the efficiency was clearly less uh, for both the 0 0.7 or the 1.1 millimeters compared to the 0 0.9 millimeters. So in conclusion, in all three systems that we tested, the 0 0.7 millimeter diameter tip required the most time for lens removal. It was statistically significant for the micropulse and the transversal uh, FACO uh, ar study arms, but the trend was the same in all three um, study arms tested. And uh, we also noted that the 0 0.9 millimeter tip was the most efficient and more efficient than the 0 0.7 and the 1.1 millimeter tips. And so it became evident that in order for effective FACO multiplication, the tip diameter needs to be large enough in, in order to maintain <laughs> an appropriate uh, aspiration and suction um, in order to achieve a maximum vacuum hold, but also it needs to be small enough that this uh, the tip edge can be completely occluded with the lens fragment. Uh, some limitations of our study is that it's in vitro in nature and we can't completely replicate the uh, what we would see in surgery, but uh, and also we used one single size for the lens fragments, um, maybe using a different size as we would encounter in surgery uh, would yield us different results. But in the future, we can either try to use different size lenses to see how these would respond to different tip sizes. And also all of our uh, FACO systems employed a peristaltic vacuum setting, whereas uh, if we tested this in the Venturi system, the Venturi system has um, a constant vacuum. It creates a constant vacuum level, and that may get yield us different results. So here are my references, and uh, I'd like to thank the medical students and the residents that helped me uh, with this project, as well as Dr. Petty, Dr. Barlow, and Dr. Olson who, for their help and guidance throughout the process. Thank you all for listening and for uh, being here today. And do you all have any questions? <laughs> yes. <coughs> so, so very nice, a, a nice piece of work. This, this all started with a medical student uh, a few years ago, Griffin Jardine. And uh, I told Griffin, I said, you know, there's all of these claims made about cataract surgery and nobody really has objective things to point out is they, they are fairly consistent size. Of course, consistent size is part of the reason why we can get some good, hard, objective data. They're two millimeters on the side. That's a, that's a pretty good size tube uh, to have that particular size. The other one is, is that when we say that they're human, they're human heart, and when they're on the, they're on the, they're, they are the equivalent of uh, lenses that were taken out from extracapsular surgery in Africa. So these are, these are three plus plus, four plus. 
speak on the limits of, of, of what's harder, uh, which is where most, I mean, any of the systems in Scotland, I mean, a lot of the ones that you use today are vacuum so a lot of them are reviewed. <laughs> It's all been, yeah, taken and care of. We got, we got a, a fully accepted by, uh, we got I have not heard back after we submitted the second set of revisions. So, uh, anyway, we expect that this will be accepted by Zero Cabinet Vacuum Surgery because the uh, issues they want to change are very, very minor. Mm -hmm. So, nice piece of work, and, uh, and the reviews of it were, yeah, nobody's ever looked at this before. It's yeah. Stuff, so, it's good. It's Thank good you. Work. Any other questions? Thank you all for listening.